So we want to talk about linear functions a little bit more. We already talked about graphing them. And some of this will be uh, mostly review for some of you guys. So um, it just depends on your background and how much you remember and probably how recently you took a math class. So this is about linear functions, linear functions. We kind of done this before, right? They look like f of x is equal to mx plus b, or can be written like that, or possibly y is equal to mx plus b. You might be used to that form um, before, and we've talked about that form, and we'll, we'll talk about it again, okay? Associated with linear functions is this quantity m, which is the idea of the slope of the line. Now, slope, for those of you who remember, is the change in y divided by the change in x, which sometimes we write as a delta y divided by delta x. And some of you might remember the phrase rise over run. That's exactly what we're talking about here. So in, in this case, we measure change of y and in two points. And let me, let me just identify those. So I have two points, x, y points. We name them x1, y1, and x2, y2. So those are their coordinates. And then the slope between those two points is the change in y, y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1, okay? Slope is the defining characteristic of linear functions. So linear functions, for linear functions, slope, or this quantity m, doesn't change no matter which two points you pick. And maybe you never thought about that before, but that is not true for quadratic functions. It's not true, for example, for square root functions. The slope will change um, if you go to different places in a square root function. But for a linear function, no matter where you are in the entire real line, the slope, this quantity m, the change in y over the change in x, doesn't change. Okay? It, it stays constant. Okay, so let's do some pretty typical examples about slope. Find the slope of the line passing through the points 3, 5, and negative 7, 2. Okay, and for those of you who remember this, this is the kind of idea you label these. One of these x is x1, y1, and one's x2, y2, and then you go ahead and plug in to this idea, this slope. So I have 2, y2 is 2, and y1 is 5, 2 minus 5 over negative 7, minus 3. That's a negative 3 over negative 10, or a slope of positive 3 tenths. Okay? This means that every time I go, when it's positive here, it means I go up 3 and to the right by 10. Okay? That's the idea of the slope. Okay, and we have talked before about um, specific or special types of lines. Let me do those again for you just to make sure. We have horizontal lines. We talked about these in the graphing section. 
they are of the form y is equal to b and horizontal lines have the same y value all across so when you're talking about computing this quantity these two y values will be the same number so you'll get a zero over something right if your two x's aren't the same which give you a zero slope so these all have horizontal lines have m is zero okay um the other special type of line that we talked about before that kind of has a, a little bit different look to it are vertical lines these are not functions let me make that note if you just picture a vertical line it doesn't pass the vertical line test um, okay but they have equations that look like x is equal to some number c and in that case when you think about the slope you get something up here the y values might be different if you're picturing what I'm picturing in my head and the x values are the same and you'll get division by zero so this means that the slope is undefined for vertical lines okay otherwise I want to just make sure that we have a pretty um, kind of intuitive understanding if I have something a graph that looks like this positive slope is moving up and to the right something like that and it could be less slanted but um, that's kind of positive slope um, and negative slope is moving down and to the right maybe something like this okay we use several different forms this is let me just make this note on here so you can this is positive slope and this is negative slope um, we use several different forms of lines and you might remember these okay we use the slope intercept form that we have seen in the graphing section y equals mx plus b we also use the point slope form y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1 that's the point slope form uh, in this case m is still the slope here and this x1 y1 is a point on the line we also have the general form of a line which took something like ax plus by equals c you see this form more often when you're solving systems of equations and you might remember seeing something like that um, so let's do an example of finding the equation of a line find the equation of the line that passes through to 5 and 1 negative 2 okay so usually if we start with points um, one of the more natural depending on what they are one of the natural um, equations to start with is the um, point slope form in order to use that form I need so I think I want to use the point slope form to find this equation 
okay? Because I already have a point. Point. I actually have two points. There's another one. And I just have to find the slope. And I can do that. I know how to do that. So let's find the slope. Cha uh, y2 minus y1 change in y. X2 minus X1 change in X. So, and you can label these whatever you want. I'll label this one as X1, Y1, and X2, Y2. It does not matter. You'll get the same answer either way. Minus Y1, 5, over 1 minus 2. So I get negative 7 over, I think, negative 1. You guys get 7? Okay. So, I'm going to go ahead and now I have a point and my slope. So, I'll use the point slope form. So, y minus y1 is m times x minus x1. y minus, and you can use, again, either, either one of those points, but I, I will probably use this first one. Minus 2. Okay. This is the equation of the line in, this is point, slope, form. And you can graph the equation from this form, plot your point, and then use the slope to get a few more points. Now you can actually, you can go from this equation or from this form of the line to some of the other forms. Let's go to let's say um, slope-intercept form in slope-intercept form I just need to solve for y so usually I go from here get y minus 5 and I will multiply this 7 out and then add 5 to both sides 7x minus 9 and there's my slope-intercept form to get to general form, I just move both x and y pieces over to the left. So in this case, I'll move the 7x and subtract 7x from both sides. And there's my equation in general form. Okay? So those are kind of the different, the three different forms of equations of the line, um, equations of linear functions that we'll use here. Um, and I think I think that's about all that we're going to do on lines. Um, so yeah, because we already did graphing. So just a quick review of linear functions. Um, so let me know if you have any questions.